Daniel chapter 7, verse number 25 is our text. We're, we've preached on this before, but we're going to try it again tonight uh, because we're living in a different time. We're living in a terrible time, really. Uh, I, I, I preached from this passage. It's been several years ago, but a lot of things have changed from that time until now. And so we need to be aware of these things that's going on. Um, not, not just aware of the situation in the world, but be aware that we're living in the last time. Be aware that the Lord could come back any minute, pray that we might be ready, we might stand by the stuff, that we might not ever give anything, just preach what God will touch to preach and always be true to him in these last days and live. Now, tonight, let's take our, uh, our text is in verse 25, but notice in verse number 21, Daniel 7, verse number 21. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Notice that. Daniel 7, 21. I beheld, and the same horn, that is the, the Antichrist, made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Not only is it said that in verse number 21, it says the same thing in verse 25 that we're going to get to. In verse number 22, the, the, uh, the horn will make war with the saints and prevail against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. So now there's going to be a turnaround. The Bible talks about that before Jesus Christ comes, the saints of God will have much difficulty, much trouble, much trial, but we need to stay by the stuff and stay true to God and don't let things uh, bother us too much. The Bible says that when, when Jesus Christ comes again, verse 22, until the ancient of days come, that's Christ, when Christ comes again, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. So there's going to be a turnaround. When the judgment is given to them, the saints, to do what God wants them to do. In verse number 22, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, who shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So that's going to be the total destruction of this world. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall arise after them, and shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Verse number 25 is our text. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times, and the dividing of time. Verse 26, But the judgment sh shall see it. They shall take away his dominion, to consume it and to destroy it unto the end. The kingdom and dominion, the greatness of his kingdom, of the kingdom under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. So that's who's going to be the winner here, is the saints of the Most High, because... Jesus Christ will give them, he'll actually give them the victory. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Then, then Daniel writes in verse 28, Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my congregations much trouble me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Let's go, Lord, tonight, if you would, in a word of prayer. As we think on this subject, Wearing out the saints of the Most High. That's what the subject is. Wearing out the saints of the Most High. 
our precious Father, Lord, I'm glad, Lord, that you've saved us. I'm thankful, Lord, that your salvation is real, not a fake or put on. Lord, I pray that you might help us in our weakness, that we might rely upon you and not on anything. Lord, I pray that you might help us to be the kind of people you want us to be, help us to be faithful to you. Lord, I pray that you might forgive us for the times we're not, for the times when, when the devil kind of takes over in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you might help us to be overcomers, not to comers. I pray, Lord, that you might just help us to be a good witness of you as we live. Forgive us, Father, for our sins. I pray you might bless and keep us, Father, from watch over tonight as we bring this man. Of course, in Jesus' name, I pray. In this passage, verse 25, this is a, a dire warning about complacency in the last days. I want to be faithful to God. I know you do too. But the only way we can ever be faithful to God is to understand that Satan is out to cause us not to be faithful. Satan is out to cause us to do all kinds of bad things. Notice in verse number 25. The Bible said, he shall speak great words, not only against the Most High. The devil will speak great blasphemous words against God himself. He doesn't mind doing that at all. But notice in the, in the latter part of the verse, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Satan's attack begins against God when he speaks great words against him. But Satan's attacks continue when Satan begins to speak blasphemous things about us, when he begins to wear us out. We get worn down sometimes with all of the things, that's what, with the pressure that we feel. If you want to do right, if you want to preach God's word, if you want to declare God's word, if you want to be a witness for God, you will face a lot of people that will be against you. You will face those. It's going to happen. I wish it wasn't that way, but that's the way God wants it to be, and so that's the way it is. The Bible says in verse number 25, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Almost to the point, be careful right here, almost to the point of a total failure. God's people can come to the place of almost a total failure. Some people that are saved, I believe they're saved, but they will fall for all of Satan's lies and for his hypocrisies. And they will go along with the world and accept the things of falsehood and not the things of God. Some people will do that. But need to be aware that that's not what God wants us to do at all. Satan wants us to be worn out. But the only way we can have victory is to submit ourselves to Almighty God and do every day what God wants us to do. I tell you what, that, that's a real chore. It, it, it's not an easy proposition to do. To do what God wants you to do. It really is difficult. Because we're just people. And because we're so full of sin. And sin looks so attractive to us. But sometimes, if, if, we, if we're not careful, we'll fall for the lures of Satan and will go into sin. Don't do that. Stay true to God. Stay true to Almighty God. Notice here that the Bible says that Satan shall speak great words against the Most High, and he shall wear down the saints of the Most High as well. And then the Bible says that he's going to do this. And think to change times and laws. Wow, the very foundation of our lives, the very thing that we built our lives upon, that's the laws of God, the way that God wants us to live, the way that God wants us to conduct ourselves. Satan 
wants to change all of that. You can see that in our society today. It's very evident. You almost have got to be blind to what's going on not to see it. We're speaking about the very, the very foundation that God has laid in the beginning and how God wants us to serve Him. The foundation is what's right and wrong. God has established that already. This is right and this is wrong. But today, that's being clouded. Today, if you say something is right, Those that are against you will say, you're being a hypocrite because you know you're not right. If we say the wrong is right, then we know we're wrong. Here's the thing. Even though we know that we're sinners, even though we know beyond a shadow of a doubt at all, this, even after we're saved by the grace of Almighty God, we can still fall into sin and depraved. We can still act like we're lost. If you say that's not possible, you're wrong. You can act like you're lost. It's a battle. It's a real fight individually that every one of us must do what God wants us to do, and it's always a battle. It always is. But God will bless. Notice this. The Bible says in verse 25, And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. Satan is attempting to change everything that there is. Satan is attempting to change the, the very basic things of our society. It doesn't make a difference what it is. If it's a basic thing that God wants, Satan doesn't want it. Understand that the only reason that we can ever have the victory at all is because we are trusting in the Lord. The wearing out of saints, what is that? What, is, what does the Bible mean here when it says the wearing out of saints? That's not physical. That's not physical. That is a mental process that's brought about by the devil putting so much pressure on us that we want to succumb to the world and all of its views. But really, we must be different from that. We must be the way God wants us to be, period. Look at this. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2. 2 Peter, chapter number 2. In this chapter, Peter is warning about false teachers, about people that would lead others astray. In verse number 1, notice what he says here. 2 Peter 2, in verse number 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. This is what Peter wrote. He said, in the Old Testament, there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So understand that there's going to be people that you like, people that you associate with that are false teachers. The Bible said, even bringing in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. That's going to happen. That is going to happen. The Bible said, many shall follow their pernicious ways. By way of whom the re the way of tr by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Look at that. If you try to do what God wants you to do, if you try to live the way God wants you to live, there'll be people, not the devil, there'll be people that will tell you you're doing it wrong. 
You're doing it all wrong. Understand that that's so. The Bible goes on. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words, that's false words or greedy words, they're, they're saying what they're saying to gain a dollar, to gain good influence. That's, that, that, that's a political process. I mean, that happens. That's all over this world. They shall make merchandise of you, whose judgments now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So understand that that is so. We're living in, a, in, in this world. In verse number 7, the Bible here talks about a man who faced this in days gone by, just as you and I will face it as we live. The Bible says, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man in dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. That happened to Lot. And you know the story of Lot. How that he lived in Sodom. And how that the two angels came and wanted to stay the night. They, they sleep outside. That's fine. He said, oh, no, don't, don't sleep outside. Sleep in the house. He knew, Lot knew, but he denied what he really knew for, for the, of the truth. He, he denied that. But notice, in verse number 7, we need to understand some of these words. And delivered just Lot. That doesn't mean only Lot. You might have it down in your Bible that that's only Lot. He delivered just Lot. We talk about that. We use those words sometimes. But that's not what this word means. It means righteous Lot. God delivered righteous Lot. Lot was a saved person. You couldn't hardly tell by the way he lived, but he was a saved individual. The Bible says that he delivered just Lot. He was vexed. That is, he was worn down. That is exactly what the Bible says in, in Daniel 7 and verse number 25, that the devil shall wear us out. Understand. It's the same doctrine, the same truth. All right? Just as, as the devil comes in, in these last days, and he wants to wear out the saints of the Most High, and he wants to think to change times and law. It's the same thing that's, that's happening here it, with, with Lot. That happened a long time ago. But take warning for this, because we can also be worn down. We can also be just wear out. It, 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 it's just too much. The best way to avoid that is to avoid it. The best way is to not pay attention to it. Do what we need to do. The best way is to put our eyes upon Christ and follow Christ and allow Christ to lead us in our lives. There's wickedness everywhere. And he's going to make a good long trip here. He's going to come back Thursday, right? So he's going to see a lot of things. I tell you what, there's a lot of, and you don't, have to, you don't have to make a long trip to see it. You don't have to. But wickedness is there. Wickedness is here as well. Wickedness is down here in the city as well. Wickedness is over there in that city as well. Wickedness is everywhere. But we need to be the kind of people that look Straight way to the Lord and do what God wants us to do. Look straight way to the Lord and obey Him. Notice here in 2 Peter 2 and verse number 8. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and notice how he did it. And this is how you do it. This is how you vex your righteous soul in seeing and Hearing. In other words, what you watch on TV, 
the music you listen to will take you away from the things of God. You can listen. There's hardly any decent music anymore. If you say, oh, I listen to country western. Oh, well, country western is not, not country western anymore. I mean, it's, it's adultery and fornication is what it is. And rock music, I have not listened. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't, I don't like the beat. I don't like the sound of it. I don't like anything about it. So don't listen to all that stuff. I mean, listen. If you're a young person, I tell you, and your mom and your daddy, they get on to you and they say, stop listening to that stuff. You, you stop. You listen to what they're saying. It doesn't drive. I tell you, you get worn down. You get worn down. Don't, don't do that. Do what your mother and your daddy tell you to do, and you'll be well for it. You see, in seeing and hearing. And then the Bible says, vexed. It's a different word that's in verse 7. Verse 7, the word vexed means to wear down. But in verse number 8, the word vexed means to torture. Listen, this is a burden on your heart that you are worn down to the place that now sin is a burdensome trouble to you. It is. So don't stay away with Don't be involved in that at all. You see, they vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So, just be careful. And do what God wants you to do. Be faithful to Him as you live your life. We're living in this, and there's no way out of it. I mean, there is no way out of it. We must be faithful to God and do what God wants us to do all the time. If God says it, that settles it. That's it. Somebody said, no, that's not right. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. No, it's not. Whatever God says settles it, whether you believe it or not. Whether if God said it, that's plenty. If God said it, he said, he said the truth. Go to stand by the things of Almighty God. Notice, notice that. There's a lot of changes that's taking place. My, my, my. I don't think I'm very old until in the morning, but Monday mornings, I'm usually pretty give out, but um, the position of men and women has changed dramatically since I was a child. It's changed dramatically. You people that are younger don't really understand that. But I tell you what, it's changed tremendously. Satan has taken his time, and he has used a little bit of time because he knows that the older generation will get older. You know, used to, I was in the younger generation, and then after a while, I was in the middle generation. But now I'm in the old generation, and I remember how it used to be. And boy, there's a, such a vast difference in people's lives. It's hard to explain to a young person. It's hard for them to, to, to think that I'm not griping about something. But I'm not griping. All I'm doing is telling you the truth. When I was pastor down in Arkansas, there was a man in the church that told me, he said, Coming from this from this guy, it was remarkable because he was he was not, he was not a talkative kind of guy. But he one time pulled me over the side, just me and him, and he told me. He said, "The change actually started during World War II." And I thought, "Well, I was born in '43, so I don't know. I don't know." But he was born after that. Or he was born before that. 
But he told me that the change actually happened in World War II when men went to war and women went to work. And because they were bearing the, the load of supplying the, uh, all the ammunition and everything else to the military, there were some male workers, most of them were women. Women began to dress like men. They began to act like men. And because of the war, women took over the responsibility of the home. And so when men came back, there either had to be a great transition take place, or the men would, okay, well, I, go ahead. Go ahead and take it. I, I don't care. Go ahead and do it. And to many men, this is what happened in their home. Because it said the man take the authority of the home, it was left up to the woman to do certain things. As time progressed, it became accepted. If that was what a, the job was. For you young people, let's listen. You don't know all this. You don't know it. But I tell you what, in, in, in the last of these last days in which we're living, it's absolutely the truth that there's so much that needs to be taught, but parents, sometimes parents, don't even know to teach it. They don't even know how to do it. Because they themselves don't know a lot of it. As time has progressed, men and women have mixed together in society and in the workplace as well. Today, women expect to be treated actually just like they're a man. You know, that's a shame. It really is a shame. Because women hold an exalted position before God. An exalted position. Well, understand that that, that is so. Women ought to be honored because of their position, of who they are. They ought to be recognized that, that, uh, that their man's help me, that they're there for a help me, not to do the things that only a man ought to be doing. God had a plan for replenishing the earth in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2. God made a plan. The plan was that male to female would marry and there would be children born that would replenish the earth. I'm going to say that again. In the beginning, God made a thing called marriage. That's where the, uh, and God sanctioned this because God took the rib from Adam and made a woman from that and gave her unto Adam. And Adam said, wow, this is, this is exactly what I need. But today, Instead of men and women marrying, they don't want to do that. It's a shame. It's a downright shame that it's happening. But today, instead of men and women marrying and having children, and they teach them God's word, and man being the head of the house, instead of that, Many people just shack up. That's what they was called when I was a kid. Today, I guess it's called living together. 
or whatever. They don't understand what a real family is. Many, many young people, they don't understand. They, they just don't get it. They've never seen it in their life. Can you understand that there's young people that have never seen, they've never seen a real family. They're not a part of a real family. And they don't know. Many times, a family is called those people that you're around. Listen, you're my friends. Some of you are not my family, but you are my friends. I have friends in other states. I have family members in other states as well. But there is a difference in the two. Many people don't know what it is to have a mother and dad that is committed to themselves, each other, and that will stay together and raise them correctly. They don't understand that at all. And so the cycle will be repeated. As they grow up, they'll just do what their parents did. It's terrible. As far as motherhood is concerned, it's, it's a great thing. I've never been a mother. I've been a, a daddy, but I've never been a mother, so I don't know from that viewpoint. But motherhood is a, is a great, great thing. But you know, if a couple, or if a, let's say a woman, has too many children, she's looked down on in society. That's a shame. If a woman has too many children, how many is too many? That's my question. How many is too many? A lot of people believe that one child is sufficient. One's a plenty. You couldn't love two, right? I can't, I can't grasp that thought either. Because if you got two, I mean, two children are different. My, my. Uh, we've got four children, and all of them are different. All of them are different. I knew one lady. She had a, a little girl first. And boy, that, that, that girl was all girl. I mean, she was all girl. But then she had a little boy. And I tell you what, little Joe was all little Joe. He was just a little boy. He would ride with me in my pickup truck. He'd stand right there. And he was interested in tractors. That's a John Deere. That's a Massey. He, he, he'd name them all. I couldn't even hardly see him. He didn't know what they were. He was a joy to be around. He really was. But he was so different than his sister. Very different. He was really a good guy. Where am I at? Let's see. Okay. Today, we're living in a time when abominations are said to be good. That's right. We're living in a time when men say that things that God says is an abomination. Men say that that's a good thing. You ever heard of a sodomite? I cannot express 
the evil that's being taught to children. I'm talking about 11, 12, 13, 14-year-old kids about Sodom, about how that that's all right. But that is going on through this thing called the Internet. It's going on. It's happening. We're living in, the, in this time that, that, that men say the thing that God says is the worst thing of all. That's okay. That's okay. Homosexuality, which is like sodomy, that's now being accepted as an alternate lifestyle. Don't listen. We need to know that that's that's just wrong. It's bad. It's bad. There's been people that's been elected to our government that are sodomites. This is exactly how it was in the days of Lot. Exactly. When God destroyed the five cities of the plain, don't be surprised. But remember this. In Daniel 7, and verse number 25, Read again what this Bible verse tells us. Let's, let's, I tell you what, let's go back up into verse 21 and read this again. And just so we can understand what's happening. Daniel 7, verse 21. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until... The Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. You see, right there, in, in, that's such a contrast. Because in verse 21, it is the war, it is, the, is, it is the, uh, the devil that makes war with the saints and prevails against them. But when the, when the Lord comes, then the saints are able to overcome. That's what he's talking about. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. That, that'll happen. Just exactly the way that God said it's going to happen. In verse 23, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of the, this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and shall, he shall, shall, and he shall subdue three kings. A lot of times, we're more interested in finding out who these kings are than we are in putting our eyes, keeping our eyes on the king of kings. Understand? Sometimes, we're more interested and who these kings are that are taking over this world than we are in keeping our eyes on the king of kings. If we're more interested in keeping our eyes on all these junk kings, they'll prevail. We need to keep our eyes on the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Listen, Daniel was a man of God who served God in a pagan country. He was faithful to God. Why? Because he always looked to God, even when they passed the law and said that anybody that asked anything should be put in the den of lions. Daniel didn't do any different. He opened his windows like he always had, and he prayed to God of heaven. Listen, Daniel looked to God, and the only way we can have the victory is to look to God. That's the only way. The only way it ever happened. If you, look, if you look to the leaders of our nation, you're looking to the wrong one. 
Paul the Apostle looked to God, and God gave him a great victory, even over the Romans, even over the people that were bound to oppress him. We can have the victory. The Bible said in verse 25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. That's going to happen. And think to change times and laws. I, I'm glad that verse 25 has the word think in there. That's his motive. That's his plan. He thinks to change times and laws. And today, the LBGQQ, whatever, whatever that thing is, I can never say it all. They think to change times and laws. But you know what? The truth is this. The truth is this. There's a male female. That's the truth. I can tell you what, what the Bible says. That's the truth. You need to understand that all that is just a lie. It is from the pit of hell. It will cause us to be, if, if we just look at that, if we can continue to look at that, and don't, don't put our eyes upon Christ, we'll be drawn away. Look to the Lord. Look to the Lord, and he will bless. The Bible said, they shall, he shall think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until the times and times and the giving of times. But the judgment shall see it, and they shall take away his dominion and consume it to destroy it unto the end. Who wins? God wins. God wins the battle. The Bible said in verse 27, And the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of his kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Notice verse 27. The Bible says, The greatness of his kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. But if you were writing that, would you write that like that? Or would you write that he gives his kingdom to the saints of the Most High? Would you just say it like that? What is this thing about given unto the people of the saints of the Most High? What's that about? I'll tell you what it's about. Exactly what it's about. It's about your children. It's about your children, your heritage. God, if you're a saint of God, if you're a child of God, and you want to do what God wants you to do, if you are faithful to God, God will bless your children. That's what he's saying. We can read Ephesians about the same thing. I think God will bless your children. God wants you to be true to him. And nothing else. So well, I don't look like God's doing that. Listen, God can do that. Do you believe God can do the impossible? Listen, God saved your soul, right? He saved mine. That was impossible, right? <laughs> God did it. He can save you too. He can, he can save your children too. He can cause them to see the truth of your own life. He can see, cause them to see how, how the God has blessed you. He really can. I know we're living in a day when the iniquity is abounding and the love of many shall wax cold, but don't let your love wax cold. Don't let your love wax cold. I want to read to you in closing here. Uh, the other day when I was on the internet, I, I saw that little blurb about the, the man this morning that didn't know about the creation. He didn't know about all that. Why, why did God cause all the sin in the world? He didn't do that. God didn't do that. He came to the world because of rebellion against God. But this other little blurb, it's about a one-minute thing. And I, I looked at this in two, three, four, five times. So this really struck me. This woman was on the Internet, and she said that she was a lesbian from her youth when she marched for women's rights. She was about, I don't know, she was 50, 60 years old, something like that. But she said that women's rights have turned into something she never dreamed it would become. She understood her saying these things would separate her from the community 
that she was used to. But she had to say it. She has seen women's rights turn into child abuse. Men haters, government haters, rioters, looters, and many other things which are all very bad for women's rights and just rights in general. I tried to find that before or later, but I couldn't find it. Free speech allowed her to protest. But now, those that have believed in free speech, they want to hear when I disagree with them. Isn't that remarkable? We're living in that time. That's the time hot. But it won't take away our right. May God help each one of us stay true to God. And may God help us that, that we might always say what God wants us to say. We might be true to Him, not to anybody else. Okay, I think I'm done. But remember, us in prayer, if you would, that we might always be true to God and to what God wants us to do. If you're lost today, we pray for you. We, this has not been a message to you that are, that are lost, but I'll tell you what. You need to understand this. What God said in His Word is absolutely the truth. And it's coming. But we need to be faithful to God, be true to God, and be right before God because we've got to answer to God. If you're lost today, know that God is watching you. He, he knows you. We pray that the Lord would just put upon you that Holy Spirit that you might understand that if you're lost, you need to trust Christ, you need to believe in Him, for He is the eternal one. And you have an eternal soul as well. And you need to Trust Christ, believe in Him, that you might be eternally saved. You have a home you're going to somewhere. It's either heaven or hell. That's it. And you can deny it, whatever you want to do. But I tell you what, it's the truth. You're either saved or lost. That's it. No, no in between. We pray for you that the Lord would help you as you live, as you, as you grow up, that you might be what God wants you to be and always be true and faithful to Him. And understand that that's so. Understand that's so. Be faithful to God.